Hey you guys, it's Anthony. I hope you're all doing well and thank you for coming on back to my channel. Good morning, good afternoon, whenever you are watching this. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is staying safe. I feel like it's been ages since I filmed anything, um, but I really wanted to come on here first and foremost to thank you guys so much for all the love and support that you have shared for my newest song, Control Freak, which is why we're here with this video today. I'm going to give you guys a little behind the scenes and do what I like to call behind the lyrics. This is something that's really important for me to do for all my songs because this is really at the forefront of why I do what I do with my music. Um, the production is super, super important. Music videos and visuals is super, super important, but none of that really matters to me without the writing. The story, the narrative, and working on this album, it's been such a concerted effort to have this start to finish story um, where one song is going to lead right into the next. And there's so much that I want to tell you guys. Some things I can say, some things I can't. We'll talk about it. Um, but again, I just want to thank you so much for the support. If you have not seen the music video, I will link that down below. Um, I did it all by myself during quarantine, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out, considering. Um... And also, if you guys have not listened to the song, I will put all the links for that down below as well. You can listen to it on any major platform that is of interest to you. It's on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, Google Play, whatever you want to do. I will link that down below so you could just pick your favorite platform. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to give me a follow on my socials, which I will also leave down below. My Facebook page for my music. Um, my Instagram page for my music, all things like that, any support, any way that you can talk to me, I would love to converse with you guys, spread the word, that's all super, super important. So today we're going to be doing behind the lyrics for my song, Control Freak. And just to give you guys a little bit of a background for this song, um, this is one that I wrote a little bit later in the recording process of this album. Um, I think I did this one maybe like five, six songs in, um... There, this song, this album is going to be released in two parts, and um, this was re I recorded some of the part, some of the songs that are going to be on the second half of this album first. Then I started diving into the songs that are on the first half of this album, and I recorded this one towards the end of that process. Um, and I knew I wanted something on here that was going to be not necessarily just like a stereotypical dance track, but I wanted something that was going to tie into the theme of losing control and just sort of like blacking out in terms of your emotions and in terms of having to take responsibility for things. You know, there's a lot on this album that talks about rage, that talks about apathy, that talks about just a lot of emotions that we go through when we do a lot of self-reflection and have a lot of introspective thoughts. And that's really what this song is about. Um, and the actual vibe of this song, it definitely has a little bit of an 80s vibe to it, which some people have picked up with, especially with the guitar intro. Me and my producer were talking, we think it's very like Michael Jackson, black and white influence influenced in the guitar intro and then it has this really cool like thumping four on the floor rhythm which is something I've never done with one of my songs before so I'm super excited to have it on the album um it's fun it's a good time I love seeing people's reaction to it so let's dive into the lyrics So, starting with the first verse, I'm gonna put the lyrics up next to me so that I can break it down line by line. The first verse, and I have my lyrics here just so you guys know if I'm reading something, these are literally so crinkled because I have them in my bag and like they, I have water spilled in my bag so now they have water damage. But I write on here like all my little notes. When I decide that I'm gonna go into the studio, I listen to my song at home like on repeat. Um, to the instrumental and I kind of write out on the lyrics, you know, which ones I'm going to get layers on, which ones I'm going to do maybe a higher harmony, a lower harmony, an ad lib. So if you see any writing on here, it's basically me writing like, you know, all right, I'm going to get three takes of this and we're going to stack it or I'm going to try and do a lower harmony here. I try and like figure out what I'm going to do. So the first verse says, you're seeing red, you're feeling blue, you're blacking out, you're all alone, another drink, another drought. So this first line of this song is a direct reference to the two songs on the album that come prior to this that you guys haven't heard yet. There's one song on this album that's very angry, rage-centered, um, a little bit of like a, like calling people out for like karma, I guess you could say. So that's a reference to the you're seeing red, the angry. And then the you're feeling blue is a reference to another song on the track that's just about me and my personal emotions in terms of relationships and it's about, you know, just feeling very down, very blue, very apathetic, being very 
just cold hearted and numb to certain situations, which is some a character flaw that I definitely recognize I have and something that I explore a great bit on this album. So that's saying you're seeing red, you're feeling blue, you've experienced both ends of these emotions, so feeling super, super high, feeling super, super low. And because of that crazy difference between them, you're blacking out. You've just reached this emotional breaking point where you're like, I can't do this anymore. And this song is really about expressing vulnerability and desperation. And that's why the next line says, you're all alone, another drink, another drought. I just imagine the visual of being like in a dark alley, just entirely alone, like blacked out emotionally, maybe blacked out from, you know, drinking too, and just kind of reaching this point of desperation and this, just this rock bottom point. That's what I was imagining for this song. And the next lines in the verse read, you're on your knees, whiplashed and numb, you're calling out, hello, hello, but no one hears you shout. You know, just owed to a moment of, you know, you have those moments in your life where you feel like you really, really need someone, and those might be the moments where nobody's really there. But the point of me saying that is because maybe that's intentional. Maybe that's somebody saying to you, you need to figure this out on your own. Nobody is going to figure this out for you. This song is also all about taking accountability, which we will get to specifically in the chorus, but saying you're on your knees, whiplashed and numb, you're calling out. It's sort of like you've isolated yourself from everybody around you and now you gotta fix this problem on your own. The next part of the verse reads, why can't you see? And this is really one big sentence. This is one of the lyrics on the song I'm really proud of. So I'm gonna read this all together. Why can't you see that no one's answers can absolve? The grip your hands have left unfreedom unresolved. By your own storm that circles blame with each revolve. Bullseye on you, cause you're the master of it all. So this portion of the song is basically saying that, why can't you see that everything that's happening around you, the freedom that you're claiming that you don't have, um, this ties into the idea on the album of feeling very judged. There's a central theme on this album of feeling like you can be this amazing person behind closed doors where you can wear whatever you want, sing whatever you want, dance whatever you want, you know, within the confines of your four walls and feel totally free and unjudged. But feeling like you can't do that out in public because of scrutiny, because of public opinion, because of criticism, um, which is basically never going to go away. And that's what this song is taking accountability about. It's saying you can only for so long blame outside factors for not letting you be who you want to be. Because at some point, you're going to just have to say, you know what, those are constants, they're always going to be there. And I'm not constantly going to live in the shadow, I'm going to get out there and do what I want to do. So this is saying, why can't you see that no one's answers can absolve the grip your own hands have left on freedom unresolved? The freedom that is within your reach, but that you choose not to reach because you're so concerned with outside public opinion, they're saying, that's on you. If you choose at this point in your life to not grab that anymore, not chase it, not fight for it, whether it's a dream, whether it's just, you know, expressing yourself, whatever it is, it comes to a point where you have to realize, you know, maybe I'm not putting in the work on my end. And that's also what the song is about. By your own storm that circles blame with each revolve, bullseye on you, cause you're the master of it all. And it's basically saying you can only point the bullseye at somebody else for so long before it comes full circle back on you. And you need to look at your own reflection in the mirror and take accountability. So I really like that portion cause it sort of switches the narrative of the song. The pre-chorus says, you're scared to hide, scared to be free, a victim, yet your own worst enemy. And that's exactly how I was feeling when I was writing this song. It's sort of the, 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 the limbo portion. You know, you're scared to hide because you don't necessarily want to just hide within the confines of the four walls of your room and just, you know, live your entire life that way. But you're also scared to be free because you know the second that you step out of there, that's when the judgment and the criticism is going to face you. Um, so in a way, you're a victim because you're pleading on one end, well, I can't go out there, they're going to judge me. But on the other end, you're also your own worst enemy because you're the only one holding yourself back. So it's very much this back and forth. Um, and then it says, you're on the ride, too late to flee, grab this bull by the horns of destiny. And I liked that wordplay, you know, putting, you know, grab the bull by its horns, you know, figuring out your destiny, figuring out, you know, chasing your dreams. What, what is your, your, you know, what is your life going to be? What is your mission in life? What is your destiny? It's basically saying at this point, if you're already considering it, you're probably already on the ride. And those thoughts are tinkering in your head and you want to reach for it and you're so close. So at that point, just take the final push. Nobody's going to push you. You got to push yourself. Going into the chorus, it says, Oh no, I'm a freak of my own control. Locked myself up without parole. Gravity bound by my own black hole. My God, the blood on both my hands is no one's blood but my own. And the chorus to me is the aha moment. 
Um, there's a song on this album that is the sort of a precursor to this that explores the whole narrative of, you know, why am I this amazing, confident person behind closed doors, but the only person who I'd let see that is myself. It's sort of like the tragedy of, you know, you have a talent and you don't share it with other people or, you know, just assuming that other people wouldn't support you, but maybe it's because you don't allow other people to support you because you're not showing them that side of yourself. So this chorus is really the aha moment to be like, oh my God, anything that I've ever held, my back, held myself back from in life to a degree can only be blamed on other people because it's really only been myself because I don't put myself out there. So I'm not gonna repeat it too much, but this chorus is supposed to be the aha moment. Now going into the second verse, I wash my hands to free the evidence my mind would rather veil in ignorance awareness blind. So basically this is direct response to the line of the chorus that says, my God, the blood on both my hands is no one's blood but my own. It's saying, I wash my hands of any guilt that I might feel because it's much easier to blame other people for my problems than it is to accept accountability on my own behalf. It's much easier to just hide behind the veil of ignorance and be blind to what's actually going on in the world. And it's a hell of a lot easier to say, I can't do this because of that than it is to say, I can't do this because of myself and my own demons and the devil that's sitting on my shoulder and who I have to face when I come home every night. You know what I mean? It's sort of saying, there's so many monsters in the world, um, but maybe the biggest monster lies within myself. The line following that says, why can't I hide behind the sins that stain mankind? I know myself, I'll just complain that I'm confined. And that's a pretty important lyric, I think, because it's, again, taking accountability in a very raw and personal way. And it's saying, God, why can't I just hide behind the fact that society is fucked up? And why can't I just hide behind the fact that, you know, oh, the world is so judgmental and there's so much criticism or even, you know, from the religious standpoint, I love that there's sort of a reference to original sin, to this idea that we are all tainted and flawed and born with that and sort of have to navigate our life around that. So it's basically just a cop out saying, why can't I hide behind that? But then it's me flipping the narrative and saying, I know myself, I'll then just complain that I'm confined. So again, it's one extreme of the other. If I hide behind that, I'm gonna say, well, I have to hide because everybody's gonna judge me. But you know what I'm trying to say? So it's basically saying, if I do choose to hide, I'm gonna complain that I'm hiding. And if I do choose to put myself out there, I'm gonna complain that there's judgment. So it's basically just, again, taking accountability. The second pre-chorus says, and it's a, um, a link to the verse right before it. So the last word of the line before this is confined, which leads right into the pre-chorus, which says, confined by my choice, suppressed by my voice, drafted myself were face to face on my battlefield me versus me. Everybody else is out of the equation. I'm looking at myself. Myself is looking back at me. There's no bigger battle that I have to fight in life than the battle with myself. A self-restricted enigma, a martyr to my own stigma. My rusted armor is proof that my facade's been revealed. That's a direct reference to um, one of my songs that was on my Genesis EP called Facade. And the whole idea of that song is basically, you know, not judging a book by its cover. You think you know me, but you really don't know me. Maybe I don't even really know myself. Um, I did do a behind the lyrics for that song. So if you want to check that out, I will also link behind the lyrics from my prior songs down below. The reason it says my rusted armor is proof that my facade's been revealed is basically saying that maybe everything is not as good as it seems. And maybe this this cool front that I've been putting on for other people is starting to crumble. You know, you can only wear a suit of armor and pretend that you were bulletproof for so long before everything starts to rust and decay and fade. And it's saying, oh my God, people are starting to see that. So maybe my facade, well, who I really am, what's underneath all of this is coming down and it's starting to be revealed. And I like the line, a self-restricted enigma, martyr to my own stigma. Because I think it's very easy as humans, and it's just a part of human nature, to make yourself, you take on this burden of your own fate that you've imposed on yourself. And it's very easy to get caught up in that narrative and make yourself a victim of your own choosing. So that's what saying, a martyr to my own stigma that I bring upon myself. And I'm a self-restricted enigma because I make myself difficult to figure out because I don't share myself with other people. So, you know, it's very easy to just be like, you know, I'm an enigma, nobody really knows who I really am. Yeah, nobody does know who you really are because maybe you don't even know who you really are because you're not sharing that with anybody. So are you really gaining anything from that? It all links back to accountability with this song. 
Going back into the chorus, I'm not gonna explain it again, but I'll read it. Oh no, I'm a freak of my own control. Locked myself up life without parole. Gravity bound by my own black hole. My God, the blood on both my hands is no one's blood but my own. And it's also, it literally ties into the fact that I am literally a control freak in life. I am a control freak at work. I am a control freak in terms of just wanting to take everything on. I'm bad with delegating. Um, if it's something that I know I can do better myself, I would just rather do it. And I'm the type of person who will be stressed and will complain about the stress, but I will get it done. Um, so it's basically, I didn't want to call the song Freak of Control because I just felt like that wasn't catchy. So I just changed it and I was like, all right, we're going to call the song Control Freak, but I'm not going to actually say, you know, I'm a control freak in the chorus. I'm going to say I'm a freak of my own control. So it's just sort of like a wordplay. Then the bridge repeats. It says, freak of control. I want to get lost rock and roll. I want to break free from my mind. That's locked me up my whole life. And basically, I just imagined this portion of the song being almost a little bit manic. I imagined it being the point of the song where I'm almost like driving myself insane with my own thoughts. And I just imagined the scene of myself like, and you could see these visuals in the video of me just kind of like shaking my head and just like pulling my hair and ripping everything off and being like, oh my God, like I'm a freak of my own control. I've locked myself up my whole life because of the voices in my head, the demons in my mind, everything that I let get to me, creating problems that don't even exist half the time. And it's saying, I just want to break free from that. Um, and I tied that into the actual sonic value of the song. The song is very, you know, it's a pop rock song. Um, there's a lot of electric guitar. There is a lot of, you know, even though it's not like this heavy hitting, heavy metal, hard rock song, there's definitely some rock influence. So it ties into the notion of rock and roll being very freeing and rebellious and just doing what you want in life and taking a stand. So that's why it's saying, I want to get lost rock and roll. I just want to get lost in the music and I just want to enjoy myself. That's basically what this bridge is saying. And then there's three ad libs in the song that says, they're sort of like the responses. So it says, I want to break free from my mind that's locked me up my whole life. And in the background, you'll hear, um, oh, do I have it here? Yeah. Can't let it be, don't let me be my enemy. So basically just saying, God, do not let me be my own enemy. There's nothing worse in life than you gotta love yourself. You cannot be your own enemy. Nobody else is gonna support you if you don't support yourself. There's a lot of enemies out in the world. If you're your own enemy on top of everybody else, you are never gonna get out of your head. Going into the final chorus. Oh no, I'm a freak of my own control. Locked myself up life without parole. Gravity bound by my own black hole. My God, the blood on both my hands is no one's blood on my own. That repeats two times. And the cool part about the end of the song is you can actually hear there's about nine or 10 different takes of my own voice stacked over each other. And it's symbolic of one, what I consider to be like all your conscience, all the voices in your head, the little devil on your shoulder, all those voices in your head that are simultaneously shouting at you. So I imagined like myself at a mic and all of the voices in my head singing at me and saying, you are a freak of your own control. And, but we also wanted to give it a little bit of like this you know, like that very 80s, like jumping up and down on the stage, the like, uh, um, not crowd surfing, but you know what I'm, I can't think of the word right now, um, but sort of like that crowd moment. So it's supposed to have that very like live concert feel, but it's also very symbolic of all of the voices within my house, myself that are sort of shouting at me. Um, and it also says, locked myself up life without parole saying, you know, it's very easy to lock yourself up internally, mentally, physically, emotionally, and think that there's no way out. And if you sort of feed into that mindset, you're going to think like, wow, I'm a prisoner of my own mind and this is all that there is for me. And I think it's very easy that way to sort of fall into a depression. This album does talk a little bit about mental health and certain things like that. And that's not something that I'm claiming to be. Um, I've never considered myself to be depressed and but I'd say taking accountability for the fact that like, if you follow these unhealthy habits, it's very easy to sort of fall into that role. So that's also what it's talking about. Gravity bound by my own black hole. The circle of darkness that I've created around me is the only thing that's blocking me from my own light. That's what that is saying. So yeah, that's what the chorus means. And that's what the song is all about. And the song is going to make a lot more sense within the context of the album because there's a lot of songs that lead right into this and this song is a direct response to a couple of the songs that are directly prior to this. This album, without giving too much away, is all about taking accountability. It's all about chasing a dream. It's all about listening to yourself. The album is totally about independence, 
intro introspective thoughts saying that you can figure anything out in your life by just listening to your own voice. Your own voice can poison you and can get you into so much trouble, but your own voice is the same thing that can pull you out of it and you don't need anybody else's help for any of it. That's what the song and what the album is really about. So thank you guys so much for watching Behind the Lyrics for Control Freak. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below any thoughts, comments, questions, or concerns. Be sure to check out my links down below for the official music video, um, the link where you can go and download and stream it on any of the major platforms. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh no, I'm a freak of